Welcome to Parlay TV. Plenty of things look easy at first. Skydiving, lion taming, from the comfort of your armchair, all sorts of risks look easy as f Cristiano Ronaldo, Diogo Jota, and Bruno Fernandez literally blew Russia off the park in a clinical display of attacking football. Wow. Sorry, what, what did you say, Kobe? Wow, bro. Let's break it down. I am Pat Mayo, and I'm here to give you the best pick at the top of the board. The best bet, if you will. So I'm going to go with just under 25 for Middleton here. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Parlay FC. I'm your host, Albert Vartanian, and joined by Sarah Peraria, Jelani Reed, and Michael Sig. Jelani, let's get right into it. I'm going to start with you. Liverpool 4, Everton 1. Uh, another win in the Merseyside Derby for the Reds, but we need to talk about Everton. The Raffolution is crumbling before our eyes. Let's talk about their form, though. Relegation form, winless in their last eight. So the question is, what is going wrong with Rafa and Everton? Yeah, you know, Everton have spent a lot of money over the past few years, and they just haven't done much with it. They've been, you know, trying to find that guy, trying to find their manager. Rafa is supposed to be that, right? And, of course, it's been a slow start. And now, you know, there's more pressure on him. And also, I'm just looking at the fact that this team just fails to do things right. At this moment, they fail to apply pressure. They fail to create chances he's a good manager right Rafa is and we know this we know what he's done um, in in the big leagues uh, but the problem is that their underperformance has also come from injuries right they've suffered a lot of injuries in their lineup and major guys right have have been hurt so he hasn't really had that depth he hasn't had the true roster available uh, you know for his services in certain matches so I think Certain fans need to be a bit more patient. It's not only his fault, right? Because all these injuries have happened, he hasn't had that whole team to work with, right? So maybe down the stretch in the few weeks that come, as they get more healthy, maybe we see better results. But again, it's just going back to the organ organization because, you know, Everton itself, they, they always have a new hire. A bit of hype comes with it. They end up losing their way quicker than we think. And then it ends up frustrating fans. So, he know, you know, uh, Rafa, that is, he knew what he was coming into, going to Everton. He just has to deal with it. He knew the challenge uh, that was presented to him, and he's suffering the consequences right now. Sarah, so Jelani's saying injury is obviously playing a big part. And when you're missing key players week in and week out, you're going to have issues. But I feel like there's more to the story here, more than just the injuries. Yes, it's a big part. Don't get me wrong. But I think the hire was the wrong move based on what Everton actually needed. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I definitely understand they're suffering from injuries, but they still have players, you know, like Richarlson, Demery Gray, their goalie, Jordan Pickford is the England national goalie. Like they're not a bad team, even with the injuries. So when you have players like this, in my opinion, I don't think you should be that close to relegation in the EPL. I think they're very much a mid-table team, and but they're not there. So, yeah, you have to wonder, is there, a, is there something going on in the locker room that we don't know about? Is he just not the guy that can, you know, motivate these players? Is there, there seems to be something missing, and I agree that it just doesn't seem like it was the right hire whatsoever. Uh, moving forward, what is the move? Do you keep Rafa? Do you look for someone else? Do you just hire Duncan Ferguson? Uh, for the rest of the season like they've done before. I mean, I mean, what is the answer here for these guys? Yeah, so I'm wearing my United shirt right now, so I, I, I say this very proudly. I don't think Rafa Benitez has been a good manager since he's left Liverpool. I don't think he necessarily is that guy to lead this team forward. I think he's a little bit overrated, and I think results are proving that as well. I, as Sarah pointed out, this is a team that's better than what they should be in the table right now. 14th of the table. That's that's embarrassing if you're Everton. This is a team that strives to potentially crack Champions League, definitely make Europa League, and they're nowhere near that right now. On paper, this seems a lot better than 14th, and I'm not sure if Rafa Benitez is that answer. That being said, I do believe they have to ride him out until at least the end of the season because sometimes it just takes the manager a little bit to get acclimated to to the environment and figure it out, but I don't believe he will. Well, it could get worse before it gets better because they have Arsenal, Crystal Palace, and Chelsea coming up 
And when it comes to December with the fixtures coming fast and quick and quick, I mean, it's going to be big trouble. And I think he, I think he's going to go. I mean, based on what's happening, he's probably going to go. But we've got to move on. Newcastle, speaking of relegation form, Newcastle, new ownership, all the money, new manager, the same old Newcastle. Sarah, how likely, honestly, is relegation for this team right now? It's, it's very likely, but I think we're going to see a lot of moves in the January transfer window. I think that's what they're waiting for. You know, they have all of this new money that they just came into, and they might be really poor right now, but these rumors about who they're signing are crazy. So I think they're just trying to get through the month of December. Like you said, December is a tough month in the EPL. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of fishers just in general. So I think they're just trying to get through these games, wait until January, and then sign as many stars as they can, and hopefully that'll turn it like turn it around for them. I mean, I think you know January is still early enough that they can jump back up the table at least you know into 17th, 16th place just to make sure they're not in the relegation zone. But I think I think that's what they're waiting for. 30 to go up down right now. Norwich minus 400. They're the favorites to go down. Uh, Jelani, Sarah saying. Maybe transfers in January can help this team. But we've seen before, you can bring in all the players that you want. If the team, if there's no strategy, if the team doesn't click and they're allowing goals, there's going to be an issue there. And we got to remember in January, that transfer window, you have to pay a premium for some of these players. That's not going to be an issue for Newcastle. So they can actually go out there and get who they want. But is that going to fix this team? And is that going to be able, is that going to be enough to keep this team up? I don't know. Like, honestly, I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, they might be relegated. But like Sarah did mention, they do have, you know, ownership coming in with a lot of money. They do have an opportunity to probably turn this thing around. So they will improve in certain areas. They need help at center back with their attack. They need so much help. So maybe they do dish out that money to try to, you know, figure things out. But again, I'm looking at, you know, right before the, the window opens, I'm looking at the fact they're playing Burnley. That should be a match that they need to get because after that you have Leicester, you have Liverpool, Man City, Man U, um, you know, Everton, who we just spoke about. So there are certain games in there that are tough. I don't know how many points they're going to probably get in that stretch, right? They're, they're going to want to get some points down that stretch just to, you know, give themselves some breathing room or some hope um, that they won't be out of this. But for me, I mean, it, it really depends who they do get. It depends where they want to dish out the money. Right. Um, they've had a tough, tough uh, year so far, obviously. You know, they, they are one of the few teams in Premier League history to not win any of their first 14. Right. So we've seen the effects. Um, so at some point, they're going to need things to work out. They're going to need to really look at their roster, see where they need to improve on. But yeah, and if you're asking me right now, I do think that the likelihood is next year they might be in the championship. Because I just don't see how they get out of this. Yeah, like you said, you know, three of those teams that didn't win those 14 matches, Swindon, QPR, and last season, Sheffield United, all went on to be relegated. Mike, lots of money there. They can buy whoever they want. But let's talk about Eddie Howe. Was he the right appointment for what Newcastle need right now? Um, I think that's a little unfair, really, to decide whether or not that's the case right now. Uh, I think this ownership group might have been expecting this team to be not as great off the jump but i don't know if they expected this team to be this bad and now yeah as we talk about it that relegation is a real possibility obviously there is you know there's the grass is a little bit greener on the other side just can they get to that other side before going down that's gonna be the big question and this this gamble might be a little bit miscalculated Eddie Howe, you know, he's going to be responsible perhaps for, for discussing with uh, the sporting director exactly who they're going to be bringing in. Um, and he's, that's when we can really tell his imprint on this club. It's going to get a big opportunity to spend a lot of cash, but that timeline for his success might be moved up just a little bit just because of how bad they've been so far. I feel like the right move would probably have been Big Sam to come in, steady the ship, then you get your manager. But anyway, let's talk about the Blonde Door. A um, lot of quote-unquote controversy. People are upset about who won it. Lionel Messi winning his seventh trophy, uh, breaking the record. But a lot of people thought it should have been Robert Lewandowski's. Sarah, what say you? You guys know what I have to say about this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, of course, I'm always so happy when Messi wins anything. I think it's it just shows the level of his, uh, you know, ability, the player he is. 
seven. Like, it's nuts. I know a lot of people think Lewandowski should have won. And I think he, he definitely, like, he, he, he played amazing this season and last season, for that matter. I know he was robbed of it last season. That's obviously not on Messi. That's French football. But um, I don't know. For me, I think it's because Messi won the Copa America. He basically carried that team with like Emiliano Martinez. So, I mean, what he did for that country was fantastic. And I know people say, well, that's not in Europe. But the thing is, it's not his fault where he comes from. You know what I mean? That's the that's where he plays. So I know a lot of people don't consider Copa America as big of a competition as like the Euros. But I don't really think it's a good argument. And also Messi still won the Pachichi for La Liga. He had the most assists. And if we're going to talk about like, I know people say, you know, Players got robbed and stuff. Let's look back at, like, you know, Modric winning. There's uh, – Cristiano Ronaldo winning in 2016 was embarrassing because Messi had way – the only thing he won was the Champions League. Messi had even more goals in Champions League, La Liga, everything. So there's always going to be controversy for sure. And I feel bad for Lewandowski. I do. But, like, I don't know. I don't I, – you can't take it too seriously, seriously you know? Yeah, Sarah's fired up. I love it. Jelani, I I just... <laughs> do, you, do you think Messi did enough? To win his seventh uh, Ballon d'Or? I think so. I think the whole thing about it being a robbery, I think that's a bit out of context. I understand what Rob did. He did a lot this year. Uh, I like him a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I, I feel bad for him. I'm not going to lie. I think he should have won last year, to be honest with you. Um, but this year, I don't think it's that much of a crime that Messi won. I just think a lot of the fatigue has played into this. The Messi fatigue. That's why... Um, everyone's critical about this and going crazy, but let's look at it. Like Messi's favored in a lot of different areas when you're talking about, you know, chances created, assists, man of the match awards, you know, individual awards, whatever you want to point out. But also, like Sarah did mention, I do put a lot of emphasis on the fact that he did get a trophy with Argentina in one of the toughest tournaments. I know a lot of people are like, okay, it's, it's South America, whatever, or, or, you know, Copa America. That's not, it's not enough, right? It's not Europe, like Sarah mentioned, but I do hold, you know, that I do buy a lot of stock into that. So I give him a lot of credit for doing that. Argentina had not won a tournament in uh, who knows how long, like since the nineties. So he brought that team there. Right. And also you look at what he did, you know, right before the ship sunk with, Barca, you know, Copa del Rey on his name, you know, to his name. So I do think he did enough to earn this award. I just think, honestly, it's the fatigue that goes into it. That's why a lot of people are frustrated. Uh, Lewandowski, like, he did do a lot. We know the stats. We know what he did with Bundesliga and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I put a lot of stock into what Messi ended up doing with uh, with country, not just club. Mike, you going to make it three for three for Messi or are you going the other way? Listen. Messi is the best player in the world still, in my opinion. He is second to none in, in that regard. That being said, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on the other side here. I think Robin Lewandowski, he was something else for Bayern Munich. He's been something else for two years, and he's definitely the best striker in the world right now. You know, Messi, when he, he moved over to PSG, we know how slow of a start that he had over there, obviously battling some injury as well, whereas Lewandowski is just banging in goals for fun. Um, I don't know how much weight now, you know, I, I've really put in this award because there's been a number of times that people have been stripped of the honor, in my opinion. I, I think this this voting committee gets it wrong a lot of the times. I think this year they did get it wrong, although I do believe Messi is the best. I don't think he had the best year in general out of everybody that was uh, that was up there. And I, I do give some credit to, to Lewandowski over there. Yeah, I'm with you, Mike. I'm with Lewandowski. I think he should have won it. Love Messi, but it should have been Lewandowski. I want to address just one thing, though, before we go. I'll leave you guys with this. Jorginho, people are saying he got robbed. Is Jor- Okay, he won the Champions League. He won the Euros with Italy. Can you say that Jorginho was the best player on either of those teams? I don't think so. I'll leave you with that. But that's it for the Parlay <laughs> FC. I'm your host, Alba Vartanian. That was Sarah Peraria, Jelani Reed, and Michael Singh. Thanks for watching, guys.